Hey guys, uh, so today's video, uh, we're gonna do about a basically a kind of basic uh, maybe explanation of uh, tool data. Um, so, you know, as we speak before, um, sometimes you see me, I have a uh, tool called 55, sometimes it's 80, uh, you know, that I call an app uh, for finishing tools. Over here, you see the 35 finish. Um, so, you know, the way I wanted to explain is, um, you know, for tool over here in general, uh, which is general out because it's an outside turning tool, uh, you can call this, uh, let's say if this is on your station one, you can call this uh, tool one. Um, I prefer doing that because if I'm going to do a job that I have already set the 55 tool, it doesn't matter what station it is, it's always the number for that 55. And we're going to talk about uh, about that 55 in a second. Uh, let me uh, change uh, the part in the machine. All right. Um, so you see, it's 55. So I know it's a 55 uh, degree tool finish. You know, then these all measurements you'll get from the sensor. Then you see the cutting direction. So this is, you know, uh, left uh, hand side, you know, radius width of the shank, which is, you know, like my machine takes one inch uh, shanks. Cutting angle, it's a 93 for most of the most of the tools. The edge angle, and I'm gonna explain the cutting. The edge, so the edge is always gonna match, uh, match my nominal, which is what I call tool. So if it's edge angle 55, I'm gonna call this a 55. And let me explain this. So, uh, first of all, you're gonna see the tools, uh, and this is how you can tell always if it's a left-handed tool or right-handed tool. Okay, make sure the insert it points up and it's directed uh, towards you. If it's pointing towards right, this is a right-hand tool. Just like this one, this one is pointing left, so it's a left-hand tool. Okay, and uh, this is a 35 insert. This is a 55 insert. See the difference. This one is much sharper, so that means you can undercut uh, way more than you can do with this one. Uh, so typically, with the 50, with the 35, you can go like like 50. Uh, I'm guessing about 52 degrees uh, and clear uh, on the minus. Uh, with the 55, you can do about maybe. 32 and with the 80 you can go maybe like 8 digits. Uh, if you try to play under, you know, if you try to go deeper, you're gonna start bottom the line. Plus the machine is not gonna allow it to. And this is what I mean. So it says uh, edge angle and cutting angle. So edge angle is 93. The reason, and I show in the book, because you have that clearance 3 degrees. The reason is so when you're cutting into phase material, so you don't hit the whole insert. First you start hitting with that tip, and then it kind of starts, you know, you grabbing with the rest of the insert. That way you get a lot, a lot less uh, load. See, like this one, it actually gives you five. So that means when you look at the tool, the tool is a little bit more towards th this way. That's how it's designed. And what I mean by I'll explain to you on a tablet by degrees. So imagine you, you do a line and then you have a 45 degree, let's say, chamfer in the back. You have a little chamfer here. You have a thread. And what I mean, see, like this tool can come down here and as you see, it can clear and scoop this up. Okay, that's where you use a 35 degree tool because it can do that. Now, this tool, since it's a right hand, it's got to be reversed. If you try to cut underneath, you see it's going to bottom out. Okay? So, this is obviously, that wouldn't be a good choice for, for that tool. You can also use a grooving tool, which is, which is going to clear a 90 degree. And a grooving tool will be something like this. This is a good for grooves. You can use a top notch. This is for grooves, threads, and stuff like that. 
Uh, they're called top notch because you have a notch that holds the top of the insert. Or you can have blade tools, you can extend it. Right? This is if you try to go deeper or even cut off the tool. Um, so this is pretty much yeah, the geometry of the tools and like that. So if you have an 80 degree tool, you know, you put an 80 here. Um, it, it depends on the shop. Uh, but remember, flat front. And when you look at the tool, let me let me grab one. We can actually, yeah. So, you know, when you look at the tool and the, how the tool is mounted. So if you look at this tool, this tool matches exactly this one. So it tells you it's a left and to the right uh, arrow because that's going to be RPMs. If you know if your tool, if you tool, uh, mount your tool like this, so this is still going to be left, but now it's going to be a reverse RPM because you're actually going to feed the material onto the part. And it, it's it's the same thing with the bars. I mean. So you kind of look at the holder, you know, usually, usually if you have a, and let, let me show you, so this would be my uh, 55 degree tool, as you see the set screws, which are these right here, they're on the top, okay, and when you look at this tool, this tool is exactly like this one, except you got that pattern insert, which is that 55 insert. So that answer, if you match that up to the drawing, it's exactly this one. Same thing is over here, it's a different brand of holders, but you got the mounting or the wedge on the top. So same thing, insert on the top, it's pointing to the, to the left. Insert on the top, it's pointing to the left. So yeah, this one, this is uh, my grooving top notch insert. So this one is pointing to the left, okay, but the insert is on the bottom, okay. So it's pointing to the left, which is this one, insert on the bottom as you see in the back. So that's going to be a right-handed tool with these right-handed uh, uh, revolution RPM. Now this is going to be my 35 degree insert. Same thing, this is pointing to my left, okay. And the insert is down. So right hand tool. So this this is a right hand tool because if you flip it, uh, it would point to the right. But since you flip it, it's pointing to the left. That's why it's called the right hand tool, but with the left RPM. So the RPM are gonna be actually uh, going this way. So as you see, you feed the material from the bottom. If the insert will be top. So our team would go this way to keep, you know, the insert on the top. And it's exactly the, and it's exactly the same thing for so the boring bars, for the sweaty bars. So for example, see this insert, it's going to be on the bottom, okay? So, let me grab a different tool. So that's also going to be a right hand tool. So imagine if we, if we copy, okay, we would have the shank, okay, the insert's pointing to the bottom and it's pointing up, right? So for example, if you point it to you, it's pointing to the right. We flip it, so it's pointing to the right, and then you're going to look at, uh, you know, you're going to look at your page and you see this is going to be a right hand tool with the left RPM. So when we go, general in okay and you're gonna see right with the left with the left rpm so it's actually it's called a right hand tool with the left rpm or you could call it uh, and everybody calls it different I don't know if there's a, what's actually a proper technical technical tool but sometimes like I said when you you know when you look at those books and you see see like a 55 diamond which is like a 55, you see 80, 80 diamond, um, you know, this is a, this is actually 60 degree, you can actually uh, thread with these inserts, then you have threading inserts, um, 
And then there's like so many different answers. For example, this is good for back turning. So if you actually go, uh, if you go inside of a bore and you're trying to uh, get like a flat or maybe even the back turn, you can use a tool like that. For most part, you're gonna be most part for regular tools. Uh, if you use a 93, uh, 93 degree uh, a cutting angle, which is this one. Remember, cutting angle it's the angle of the tool. Edge angle is gonna be the edge of the insert, and um, and that's how you pretty much kind of set up uh, you know your basic tools. Uh, same thing for the inside and outside. Uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.